Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to another episode of an ongoing series where we basically take the camera anywhere we want to try to find secrets and new discoveries to some of our favorite games. This week we're doing Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Way back in the day we did Mario Kart 8, still an episode worth watching. I made sure that there's some exclusive footage there, but this week we're going to be looking at some DLC courses as well as some tracks that we may have missed in the past. We've got to give a huge shout out to the cam creator, Shadow, as well as Ro and Fish Guy for helping me out with this episode. You guys were incredibly kind with your time and patience so thank you so much and with that said let me thank you viewer for your time and patience as we now go into our episode to show you what we found so we're gonna be looking at a lot of maps from far away due to the nature of the game and that's gonna be a little bit later in the episode but to satiate your appetite for now I just wanted to show you a zoom out of baby park for both the GameCube and deluxe and I tried to get the camera lined up as perfectly as I could so that you can see the incredibly stark contrast in how these two levels are designed Believe it or not, Baby Park on the GameCube version has a lot more unique assets than the Baby Park in the Mario Kart 8 version. And I think the only thing that remained in the exact same spot and was the exact same sort of object was the Ferris wheel. But even if you look at that, they're still designed differently from one another. Anyways, let's start looking at some oddities and character models. The first one I want to show you is Rosalina. Now this one's not entirely too surprising because Rosalina is a character whose eye you are able to see in the peekaboo if you look very, very closely. But take the camera inside of the peekaboo. It's just going to show you that the eye is fully modeled, as well as the entirety of her face. But moving on to baby Rosalina, now this is a bit surprising. Her eye is completely closed off by her peekaboo, no matter which angle you look at. So taking the camera inside of her peekaboo will still show you that she does have another eye. But even more surprising than that is that if you take the camera inside of the binky, you can see that the developers decide to make a texture for her mouth. And the same can be said for baby Daisy as well. But one particularly interesting case is Baby Mario. Now, obviously, he doesn't have a binky, but his hat seems to have a little bit of a secret underneath. Unlike any of the other characters, including Baby Luigi, Baby Mario has a full head of hair underneath his hat. Now, normally, something like this would happen if the hat came off for whatever reason. I did some heavy testing to see if I could ever get the hat to at least move to somewhat expose the hair on his head, and there's not a single thing that I saw that seems to indicate that the hat ever gets removed in any sort of way off of Baby Mario's head, or even jostle around. And now let's move on to the Koopa Troop. Now, every single character that has a shell in Mario Kart and a lot of Mario games in general, to be honest with you, for some reason, their backsides will be fully modeled. Mario Kart 8 is no exception, but with Koopa Troopa, you don't really get to see his body because it's completely inside the shell. And so when you take the camera inside, there's something stranger going on. The tan part of the shell seems to have a texture on the opposite side inside the shell. It's got shadow casting and everything. It's really, really strange. And I grabbed a ripped version of the model for the Shy Guy so that you can get a really, really good look of what it looks like when we take off his mask. Here you can see there's some weird texture stretching and the headband kind of comes to a point. Also, the texture for his outfit continues inside the mask and has a little bit of a shadowing effect for that as well. Also, I wanted to see if Roy Koopa had any eyes underneath his sunglasses. And while he doesn't have eyes, once again, taking the camera inside of his model will show you that his sunglasses were modeled separately from his skull, allowing you to see more skin of his face completely wrapped around his head even when you take the camera inside those sunglasses. And now let's talk about birds. There's a good handful of birds in Mario Kart. And the first one we're going to be looking at are these hawks. Now I had no way of freezing the game footage which would make seeing flying birds a lot easier on this show. But what I could do was line the camera up in such a way where the bird flew right in front of the camera and then I slowed the footage down and what you're seeing here is that the hawk has its own set of yellow eyes as well as a very interesting pattern to the wings. Though they're not technically birds there are these fish inside this ice stage that are just 2D textures. And one of the most interesting features about these fish is that they have white around their eyes. And now if we take a look at the butterflies, these are probably the most basic looking butterflies you can get. They do not have any antennae or heads. They have a little bit of a tail, but it's just one flat texture that's sort of bent in the center and flapping like a butterfly. And <laughs> right next to those are a couple of white little birds that have more of a pudgy design and black beady eyes. And you might have thought that we were done with the birds at this point, but no. Like I said, Mario Kart has a good view of them. Here in this stage, you can see that they're seagulls and the tail feathers of the bird sort of look like footprints on the very edges of 
of them. Moving on to other models, we got Moomoo Meadows here, and inside the barn, there's a couple of toads that are just hanging out. I just wanted to show you they're not actually standing on anything. Instead, they're positioned in such a way that the player can see them best, but since the player's angled so low, you would never know that they're just kind of standing in midair. But if those toads weren't low poly enough for you, take a look at these toads in Baby Park. These guys are sitting in Bowser Jr.'s ship, and because it's constantly moving and it's so far away, the developers felt that they could easily get away with making these as basic looking as possible. One of the most interesting things is that it seems to have like a glossy sheen all over the model, making them look plastic. Also, Toads and Shy Guys go in and out of this lift in Mount Wario, and surprisingly, you can see this for yourself. I'm just giving you a closer look at it. Once they go inside the lift, they just sort of disappear, and whatever they wanted loaded in next is what's gonna show up on the other side. There's no rhyme or reason, and it doesn't look quite good at all. I feel like there was supposed to be like a dark masking effect that was at least supposed to cover all this up, or at least if that wasn't planned, they probably should have. And then in the Hyrule stage, we have some Hyrule soldiers. I just wanted to take the camera close up to them too, because it's just sort of interesting to see Hylians here. Taking the camera close up will show you though that they do not have eyes. I was kind of hoping to see some sort of feature like that. Instead, they opted for the minimalism approach, something that you actually see in games like Ocarina of Time. And now before we move on to the next category, let's do a zoom out of Mute City. This stage is easily the most impressive in the entire game, with at least hundreds of 3D modeled buildings, as well as a uniquely designed desert that's in a different quadrant of the level too. At this point, you can barely see the entire track which is no small track either, and somehow all this runs at 60 frames per second on a Nintendo Switch. Whatever they did here, they need to do for a lot more games. This is super impressive. It's almost like dark magic. Okay, now we're going to talk about things that we found inside stages. And the first one I want to talk about is Big Blue. And Big Blue is interesting in that you never get to collect coins, but having coins in any map is an essential. If there are no coins in the map, the game crashes. So what do the developers do? Well, for Big Blue, if you take the camera inside this cliff, you'll find a single coin hidden inside the geometry. Same goes for Mute City, giving you a point of reference here for where you'd have to be on the map. But if you take the camera inside of this building right next to the track, you'll see that there's another coin. And here's a very unusual one in Baby Park inside of one of the steel beams for the Ferris wheel. If you take the camera inside and look at it here, you can find an item block. In the Animal Crossing stage, regardless of which season you go to, if you take the camera inside the ocean and underneath the sand, you can find various fruits that are supposed to be on the trees. And just for fun, I wanted to show you what happens when the train goes inside the tunnel. As you can see, it teleports from one end of the tunnel to the opposite end of the tunnel to repeat its animation. And here we go, this is Mr. Rossetti. Now, if you hit Mr. Rossetti, you can see his feet, but I just wanted to show you what it would look like if you could see Mr. Rossetti going back into his burrow, which is a great segue to this really interesting little tidbit here. In Princess Peach's garden, you can see this blip underneath the map, and for the longest time, I wasn't even gonna include this because I thought for sure it would just be like a glitched shadow of like a chain chomp or a racer or something, but it turns out that's not the case. <laughs> Instead, it's far more interesting. It's the spawn point for the Monty Moles. That's right, these Monty Moles. If we were to slow the footage down, you could see that they are in fact the disturbed dirt that the Monty Moles leave behind, and only appear there for a very, very brief moment before being warped to where it's supposed to be. Also in the Hyrule stage, just before you leave the castle to go into the town, you'll find a rectangular depiction of the rug. And then in England, people notice that in both Mario Kart Tour and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, there's this path over here that seems to never get used no matter which lap you're on. So take the camera over there, we'll show you that very, very quickly the road ends and there's nothing really to see here, except for the fact that the brick road turns into a gravel road and that the brick road is layered on top of it. Also on Rock Rock Mountain, if you take the camera outside of this tunnel where the paratroopers are, you can find something that you don't typically see in this game, which is a one-sided texture to represent the outside. It's completely flat and not anything like the rocky formation that you see on the inside of the tunnel, but I thought it was really fascinating, especially for the fact that there's such crude lines to make the shape of the windows. Now I want to show you various aspects of Bowser's castle, which sadly is not the most amazing zoom out when you take it up above. The developers put more attention and care on the interior of the castle, and not so much the outside that you would never get to see. But also, in a previous episode of Boundary Break, I took a look at this unused hallway that was a viewer request all the way back then, which, by the way, if you ever want to follow me on Twitter, you can find out what episodes are coming 
coming up next, as well as drop any suggestions you might have for that episode. Anyways, back then, the camera was really, really difficult to use, and now that we have better technology to work with here, I just wanted to show you what it looks like without any concessions holding it back. And now we're back to Baby Park, and I want to show you some of these milk bottles that have special textures on them, like this one that says Moo Moo Meadows Milk, as well as Royal Patisserie Peach and Daisy. But more important than that, I want to show you this Ferris wheel because it has Mario characters inside of the cabs. This would be near impossible to see for the player, so I took the camera up close so we can figure out what all the characters are together. First up, we got Toad, obviously, and then we have a Shy Boo, followed by a Shy Guy, and then there's this one. Now, before I tell you who this is, I dare you to take the challenge in the comment section to guess who this is inside the cab. I'll give you a second to write it out. Feel free to hit pause at this very moment if you need to. And now let's begin with the speculation. What I thought first was it was a side view of a Koopa with its eyes sort of peeking above the first line. But after exploring enough maps, I realized that was not the case. I'll tell you something, I would have never ever guessed who it was if it wasn't for the fact that I went to the water park later on to find out that the entire place is just inhabited by Nokis, a Super Mario Sunshine character. And when you look inside of this Ferris wheel, you can see that all of the cabs are occupied by Nokis. And what's happening here in Baby Park is that they just reuse the same texture from this level and put it into this one where it's a lot less obvious to figure out what character is supposed to be inside. Back at the Animal Crossing stage, if we take the camera inside of the Able Sisters shop, we can find various pictures that are hung up on the wall of the Able Sisters family. Going from left to right, we seem to have a singular picture of Sable. And then we have a picture of the two as young kids in front of a farm. And then in the next window, over again from left to right we seem to have Mabel as a baby with Sable and their mother and then there's another picture of all three that look a little more grown up and then on the far right we seem to have a picture of someone with glasses on whether they're sunglasses or not it's hard to tell because it's an old black and white photo shared with a blotchy texture and then in the Paris stage we have this chalkboard over here and I thought it was really cool it has fully legible text if you read out the whole thing it tells you who the teams are and the A team is Super Mario Motor Team B is Luigi Gusters C is Toad Mushroom Powered D is Yoda Yoshi Runners, E is Lord Bowser, and F is Princess Peach. And all those team names are used in the first stage of the game. You can see all these pit stop buildings that are themed like the characters whose teams they represent. And then in Bone Dry Dunes, there's these pots that you'll drive by. And what's really cool about them is that if you take the camera up to them, you can see that they're silhouettes of the old 8-bit Super Mario Brothers characters. All sorts of fun stuff like the environment, Goombas, Koopas, Hammer Brothers, Bowser's Flames, and coins. And further still, on some of the blankets, you can find the sun from Mario 3 stitched inside the fabric. This one, I gotta say, I, I'm a little surprised by. It may not seem super interesting to you, but I don't think there's ever an angle where you could see it as the player. On these drums over here, if you take the camera behind them, for some reason the Nintendo logo is plastered on top of them. And then in Ice Ice Outpost, I noticed this giant crane that seems to hold up a large portion of the stage. But what's more interesting, of course, is that Morton's construction logo is plastered on it. And even more interesting than that, if you take the camera over to the complete back end of this thing, you can find that the crane seems to have a crude depiction of Morton's face. He at least shares the same haircut and the headlights seem to have eyes themselves. And just like we did for the Wii episode of the game, Wario's Goldmine has a massive village that's way off in the distance. And I just kind of want to glide the camera through here so that you can get a nice good close-up of all these buildings for the first time. That's of course assuming you don't count the original Wii episode. And then Cheeseland is really, really interesting. Yeah, you can find some geometry that's completely hidden underneath the boundaries, but this level is packed with some good stuff. Like the tents that are set up by the toads, you take the camera inside, you can find that they're pinned together by coins and they oftentimes have all sorts of little stuff like crates and barrels. Also all the way out here you can see that there's giant slices of pizza. Taking the camera all the way up to there can show you that those pepperoni slices are in fact mushroom huts and the cheese appears to only be sand. Next up, we're going back to Baby Park. I honestly didn't realize I collected so much footage for this one course, but taking the camera up to the shop paratroopa can show you that there's a cork board that depicts a green shell and a red shell, a green pipe, a brick block, 
and a question block. And then going inside the shop will show you that it has a couple of interesting textures. But what's more interesting is that there seems to be three boxes with plaid designs for the ribbons. And then of course, we gotta take the camera up to the projection screen in Mount Wario, because it seems for whatever reason, it's actually tracked to our special camera here. So if we take the camera all the way up to it, it just goes pure white. And you can even catch it at certain angles where there's still just a little bit of the game world itself still left in the shot before it seems to rip open into the white void. Speaking of bright, white lights. If we take a look at the menu before you go online, as you know, there's toads that are floating in space as well as the planet Earth. That's really interesting and all, but something I've actually never quite seen before on Boundary Break, staring directly into the sun causes the screen to completely blind the player in white light. It bleeds into a perfect square, not even the 16 by 9 in which the game operates on. But because of that fact, I managed to get a glimpse of the sun over to the right here that proves that it's a 3D spherical object. All right, let's start talking about zoom outs. Zoom outs in Mario Kart are a especially fantastic. And one of the first ones I wanted to show you guys is one of the funniest ones when you look at it from up above, which is Yoshi's Circuit. Now the one you've been looking at this whole time is the GameCube version. One of the things to take note here is that his cheeks are made of water and his boots are made of mountains. Also just gonna do like a little bit of a sweeping shot here, just so that when we do the comparison, you can really get an idea of what's different and what's not. Now moving on to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, you can see now that the cheeks are made with some sort of white brick, the same one that's used for the eyeballs. And the feet is no longer a set of mountains, but instead, a a small little town by the shore. The shell has turned into a new feature, which is a canopy, and those eyes I showed you a moment ago also features a billboard, just a completely different image than the one that was used in the GameCube version. And then moving on from there, here is a full shot of Mount Wario. This was something that was heavily requested in the last episode, but sadly due to culling based off of the player's position, I wasn't able to show you the entire shot, but with this new camera that I have, the game camera position is now tied to the special camera that we're using. So no matter where I look, you shouldn't see any culling at all, which is why for the first time you're seeing all of Mount Wario in one single image. Moving on, we'll now talk about Waluigi Pinball. This is another great shot for a zoom out. Only issue that I have here is that in order to get the entire stage in one shot, the game's void starts to appear, which sadly does not refresh the screen, so it gives a after image effect. However, with a little bit of careful movement, the void isn't too distracting. And from here, you can really get a sense of the physics of the pinballs, which are in truth, not that great. But when you're in the middle of racing, you'd never take the time to notice. And honestly, it's probably better balanced for the race itself, like for example making it possible for the drivers to get out of the way. Music Park is another course that had aggressive culling in the original episode, so taking the camera out now can get you the entire thing in one shot. <laughs> Again, this is just something that's probably just really special to me, but I love the fact that you can see all the music notes jumping around, as well as the wind instruments and the piano keys, literally everything. Moving on from there, we got Royal Raceway. And this is something that was also featured in the original episode, but there was something I wanted to go back and fix. See, in the original episode, I made a point to say that the bricks have little tiny silhouettes of hearts all over each brick, but I did not give enough time for the viewer to really soak that in. So to make up for that, here's a nice clear image of that in nice crisp 1080p, as opposed to the original 720p that was in the episode. And then here's some various angles of Calamari Desert, a Nintendo 64 classic stage. I wanted to show you how the tunnel works, which which proves that the train is in fact always on track and is not warping around for the benefit of making itself an obstacle for the player. Now we're talking about Moo Moo Meadows, and this one is a great one because I love the perpetual twilight in it. But also, when you zoom it out, you can see that even a stage that is simple as this seems to have a lot of detail to it, which is a pretty stark contrast to later courses that get used in DLC and things like that. Which, by the way, let's move on to a DLC course. We got Paris here, and admittingly, this is probably a terrible example of what I was talking about. Well, I guess it depends on perspective, actually. See, all the buildings that are right off the side of the road of where you drive around in, they're incredibly detailed, so much so that it's honestly pretty wild, but in contrast, all the buildings that are in the background are incredibly low detailed to the point where you can easily make out which ones are the high detailed and which ones are the low. Also one of the fun things about this course are these statues that are over here. They almost look like gummy versions of what they're supposed to be. And then this building is completely untextured, which is shocking. Again, to my recollection, I didn't see very many buildings or anything this far off in the background with the original content that would opt to be this low detail. And of course, the whole catalyst for doing this episode over again, Maple Treeway made its way back. And even though there isn't much to talk about with this particular stage, I wanted to zoom it out and give you various angles because it's a fantastic looking stage and deserves a spot in this episode.
Also wanted to revisit Ribbon Road because it's one of the best stages to zoom out for Boundary Break, seeing as it's meticulously crafted to look like a bedroom, and it's got all sorts of secrets hidden around inside that makes it fun to explore in general. Taking the camera outside of the bedroom, once again, I will show you. Features trees, but they're not even fully modeled. And from there, we're gonna go to New York. The cool thing about New York is that if you take the camera all the way over here, you can see the Statue of Liberty, which is really funny because past games, as well as ported over for this game, has a parody of the Statue of Liberty featuring Princess Peach. And then people on the internet were quick to notice that this one mushroom platform seems to go on forever. And I want to take the camera out to show you exactly where it did, in fact, end. Which, I will say, it takes quite a while before you do reach the bottom. But, funny enough, this is not something that is unique to this Rainbow Road stage. In fact, Sky Garden features these very same models, just with different textures, and also go on for a really freaking long time. And now let's do a zoom out of the very first stage of the game. This one's really cool, too, because there's all sorts of buildings outside of the stadium. And there's a lot of them that are fully modeled, a lot of them that only have three sides, a lot of them that only have two, and then it comes all the way down to one with the ones in the very back, also known as billboards. Here's a zoom out of Hyrule, but really the reason why I wanted to show you guys this one is because all the way off in the distance here is a very, very nice touch that I never noticed in the past. It's Death Mountain that even includes the donut ring that was in Ocarina of Time, which I was really shocked by. A few days late with this one, but I know that a lot of fans that just celebrated Christmas will appreciate this shot. It's shocking how good this looks from far away. And then in Boo Lake, I was surprised by one thing in particular, taking the camera all the way in the back here and show you another billboard for a castle. And what's really odd about this castle is that it has flags on the top, not very spooky if you ask me and I don't know if it's just a flipped asset but it kind of reminds me of Wario's Mansion in the Game Boy games. I don't know you can be the judge. And then over here in Peach Gardens I just want to show you the zoom out of this since it's relatively a small stage but it fits really really well into that 16 by 9 format. And that's all I got for now. There's going to be a previous episode of Mario Kart 8 if you want to see a little bit more content or if you want to see more Switch games covered on the channel feel free to subscribe or leave a like on the video. And just as a reminder to folks Snipey is a co-host that uploads videos every other week so that we can hit a video drop every single week of the month. Hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you again soon. Take care.